right here engineering graphics and design learners welcome to how to egd in this video i'll be discussing the most requested video on this channel how to draw the two-point perspective that's required for your egd civil pet now i'll be detailing the exact steps on how to absolutely nail it so please stay tuned and if you do want to be sure that you see all the upcoming videos I'm making, especially with regard to how to prepare for your final grade 12 exams, make sure you subscribe to this channel and you ring that bell. Righto, let's get going. Righto, grade 12s, here we are on page 13 in the actual PAD document. We're just going to first read what is the requirements for 5.3 which is your two-point perspective now if you do not have a document like this with you I've placed the download link in the description of this video all right let's start reading we have to draw a human eye detailed human eye view two-point perspective okay there's two key things here it must be detailed in other words you're gonna have to really put in all the details that you will see in a human eye perspective and that's going to include your window sills your door frames all of that in this two-point perspective all right that shows what the front entrance and the side view of the building which you have designed and it must include a portion of that timber deck all right very important the horizon line the hl is specified to be at 1.8 meters above the ground line okay now i'm going to show you how to hack this this is actually a great um, requirement and it's going to make your view look absolutely amazing i'll talk about that later all right what's the evidence that you must include you must include all the views or drawings used to produce this perspective drawing all right so they, that's going to be the top view and the side views you have to show that the construction method used must also be shown here to get this drawn note a copy of this drawing will go onto the cover page of your pad portfolio so this is really going to be the impression that people have of your actual pad in the end very important let's look at the actual requirements on the checklist and if you go down here to 5.3 again it asks again for the evidence of the views all right those are the top views, side views, as mentioned, as well as the construction. If you do all of that, you're going to get a one year. All right. The correct orientation. In other words, do they see the front view? Do they see a side view? Um, the HL at the correct height. Is the timber deck shown? That's another two. And then the correctness of the perspective drawing. That's seven marks. So that gives you a total of ten. All right. Now I'm going to show you two ways of actually getting this done let's have a look at the first example right though this is a two-point perspective that was done in a previous year so it's yours of course is going to look according to your design but these are the views that's uh, specified in the actual document it's our top view and the two side views used to produce our two-point perspective and you can see here all the details that was included in this two-point perspective now we've got our picture plane we have our ground line here, we've got our standing point, our right vanishing point, left vanishing point that's on the horizon line. Okay, all of that is important. Now, I'm going to show you the steps in a moment, but just pay attention here for a little bit. This is drawn to scale 1 to 200, and if you are looking to do yours in this method, you're going to have to also scale down to scale 1 to 200. Maybe your actual floor plan was done in scale 1 to 200. You're going to have to redraw that as well as your two views, your elevations. Now you can see here, we don't need the details of inside because it's an external view. Make sure how you orientate this, that you will be able to see your timber deck and your main entrance, of course. You will have your two side views in place and this angle here is 30 degrees that is 60 degrees here okay and then from the sp the line goes parallel to our top view up to the picture plane and down to our hl now i said earlier that the hl is at 1.8 meters which is eye height now you'll agree with me if someone walks into our building they are walking through a doorway and that is on average the eye height of a person so once you've drawn your two views okay 
let's say it's according to scale or not to scale, <laughs> you still have to place your horizon line roughly at the eye height of someone entering your building. Okay, that's why it says plus minus 1.8 meters. Of course, if it's scale 1 to 100, that's going to be 9 millimeters. If not, make sure that HL is at least the same height as it would be if someone walks into this doorway. Okay, and you can see then the perspective that you see in the actual building is very much similar to what you would see it with the real eye walking towards this building. This is very much a perspective that you could see. This is one way of doing it. I'm going to show you a hack. All right. Okay, so here is my hack. What I've done is I've actually gone and I've made a photocopy of the floor plan, which was one of the drawings done by this learner. And I made another photocopy of the two elevations that was drawn. Okay, this is also all part of this actual document. All right. Now I'm going to cut them out and I'm going to just actually stick them on an A3 page. I'll show you how to do that. And then I do not need to redraw all these views. Of course, you're welcome to do it in this method. This actually, I would think, is a preferred method, which um, it takes a lot of time because you're redrawing four different views here. But if you would like to hack it, this will still be acceptable by your teachers. Okay, so what you're going to do is you can take these and we're just going to cut it out quickly. Rightio, so here is a nice clean piece of paper. We've got our top view cut out and our two side views. Make sure you line them up so that they actually are correctly orientated. They're going to come somewhere here at the bottom. Now, the challenge with this drawing is that the first time we do it, it's going to be a little bit trial and error. Okay, so remember, we're going to try and get this at 30 degrees, so you can just use your actual triangle for that. And we're going to just position it temporarily. We're not going to stick it down yet, all right? And our 60 degrees, of course, is going to be that side. Now, if I have my standing point directly from this corner down, I can now kind of determine where my vanishing points will be. The same on the right-hand side, parallel from this SP out and down. Okay, and you can see here we're going to really need most of this actual paper that we have. Okay, so what I'm going to do is if I place it there, let me draw in construction just as a test our picture plane right directly below this corner we're going to have the line going to our SP right then we have our ground line above that and you can just go and draw that in right that ground line is really lining up with the bottom of our actual views okay you see that on both sides now we can move these as far out as we possibly can. We can actually move them out of the actual drawing if we would like to, like I show you on the side, to really leave enough space here. Because remember, your, uh, to, to establish a vanishing point, you're going to go from this SP to the picture plane down to the HL. So our left vanishing point will be roughly here. That helps us to place our actual side view. I'm just going to go ahead and stick this down. Okay, I'm going to do the same on the, with the right vanishing point, so we're going to just keep that in place here. We know from the SP, it's going to go up here to the actual um, picture plane, and then down, so our vanishing point is going to be roughly around here. I'm going to stick this one also right on the edge here. Okay, I'm going to now stuck, stick this one down. Okay, the main difference between the two methods that I've shown you, the second one here is going to help us to draw a little bit of a bigger perspective drawing that's going to be a bit more realistic. You can see here the size is scaled up, whereas in this example we've managed to fit in all three views on a two-point perspective A3 page. Okay, but then the scale is much smaller. All right, so what we're going to do is once we have these three, it's going to label here picture plane. This is our ground line, of course. Okay, let me take you through the steps necessary for actually drawing this drawing. So you're going to start off at your SP at 30 degrees, which is parallel to one of those edges. You're going to draw your line up all the way to your picture plane. And that's going to come down to your horizon line, which I'm going to draw in right now. So as I said, it must be roughly at eye height plus minus 1.8 meters. So that's roughly the height of this 
doorway here or just below it. So the horizon line is going to go all the way down here. All right, you can do that in construction. Okay, this is then our right vanishing point. Make sure you mark that clearly. And the left vanishing point is going to be on the other end, parallel there from the SP and up. And down to your horizontal line. That is our left vanishing point. And this line here, of course, is our HL line. Okay, so there we set up now with the start of this drawing. The corner of our actual roof overhang is right here. And then our um, deck on this specific drawing is a bit further back. So I'm going to just roughly draw for you the first part, the outlines of this drawing. Let's get going. Radio, I'm going to stop at this point because I've done the massing on this two-point perspective. You're going to have to finish yours because in the end, we want a clear two-point perspective with all the details and the annotations, the SP, the HL, clearly mark your right vanishing point, left vanishing point, showing all the details, your barge boards, your fascias, your window sills, all of that needs to be in your two-point perspective to get full marks for this drawing. And it's this one that you will enlarge on a copier and stick on the front of your actual pad document. Right here, that is an overview of how to do your two-point perspective. Now it's your turn. <music>